Now, one of the more obvious differences uh, that I pointed out earlier was the nacelles. Mm. Um, and again, these look a lot more advanced. These mm. these would actually, I think, work better as the transwarp nacelles. Yeah. But in a way, they're kind of getting back to the refit uh, style warp nacelles in a way, because they have the fins on the back, although the fins on the refit are on the sides. Mm. Uh, mm. Um, you know, the, the Excelsior ones looked a lot more simple, which, as we've talked about many times, speaks to advancement. So, yeah, it's a new style of warp nacelle because it's transwarp. Mm. But these, I think, look more advanced than the Excelsior's nacelles. Mm. Well, it's that, it's that one step. They've now got glow and basards. That's mm -hmm. that's the step, you know. It, I mean, the the Excelsior engine, the Excelsior engines, while a nice design, are boring. It's not a bad thing, but they are. You uh -huh. you you make the Enterprise B engines. I mean, that there were at this point now there is TNG, there is you know all these other shows where we understand that this is where technology jumps. So very simple thing, but to add, even if they're blue, they're not red, which is fine. You know, TOS was a slightly different color. I mean, this this is part of the iterative step, having. A glowing element in there is a visual continuity. It's a visual linking to that further step, which I love. Although comparing, you know, the actual details, I never realized it was such a stuck-on component. You know, it really <laughs> yeah. isn't integrated. It is just, you know, shielding or or something. Mm. And that's only when you get close up you can see that. Um, and it's a, again a clever reinvention of let's use let's just add stuff. We can't really change anything. We can add stuff. You know, I do like the fins. You don't need fins. It's not aerodynamic, but come on, they look good. I like the they fins. They do look good. Oh, and the the, the addition of that front part, uh, not only the glowing element, but just the way that it breaks up that that yep. line. The Excelsior has that line all the way around. It just looks boring. So to break that up, and again, yep. that ties in visually again with the refit, where it's mm -hmm. it's got the, it's got the grilling, but it's not all mm -hmm. the way around the nacelle, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's another reason that I probably like it mm. a lot better. Um, hadn't thought about that. Yeah, it does. Because that grilling was quite odd that it would be the entire everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I hadn't thought about that. And nice. plus the, the addition of the pennant uh, that's lit up and the uh, mm. the light up registry number on the back, I think, is also visual tie-ins and cues that suddenly you realize yeah, it looks like the refit more. Mm. So it becomes a little bit more, uh, it's more dynamic, something more to look at than just mm. the plain nacelle. Well, the other obvious one, guys, and we'll hit the smaller things in a minute, but the obvious one, okay, apart from the color, I'll just hit the car straight away. The Excelsior's <laughs> are blue. The Enterprise B is sort of a, what would you call that? It's a green, but it's a... It's like, like a turquoise. Turquoise or a robin's egg blue, as we call it. As when, mm. we, when we paint the refit model, there's you got to have robin's egg blue because there's all of, it's all over the ship. You don't even realize it, but it's like a subtle baby blue or turquoise. So, yeah. And it, it, it's a very off color. And the Excelsior yeah. is a very classic blue. It's very primary color. There's an off color, which is kind of odd. But it gives it a, a unique feel, and but it, because it's a lighter blue too, it pops better with space behind it, with the blackness of space. The mm. darker blues, I mm. think, get lost more in the black. So maybe that's another reason it's very mm. noticeably, noticeably different. Mm. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. Although on this top view, you can see one go back to the cells for a second. The Excelsior cells then boom into B. The way the piping is, the way the coils are, is slightly different. Mm -hmm. That might have been model choice or whatever, but that's what we see for these models. But the other big noticeable change is obviously these new, big, bulking, hyper-powered, turbo, quantum, well, not really quantum, but impulse engines. The Excelsior, as we know, for the top view, simple. I, I do love the Excelsior source. I think it's a beautiful version of design. Really big mm -hmm. impulse engines. I mean, these are, these are pretty, pretty big. And then, boom, Enterprise B. You can see the differences. There's a lot of subtle differences with the saucer. But you've got those big, giant impulse engines, bigger than the classics, put right there to the saucer. And I really like that as a design. What do you think, Stuart? I totally agree with you. Um, I thought you addition... disagree there. <laughs> no, no, no. The, the addition of okay. the extra power. And and uh, it just it looks more powerful, more menacing almost. I mean, it's almost it's the first time we've kind of seen that many impulse engines on a ship. Because even mm. the Enterprise D had three. Mm -hmm. Two on the saucer, one on the neck. And the saucers aren't even used most of the time. Yeah. And this one for such, a, well, compared to the D, for such a smaller ship, this almost seems like overkill. <laughs> well, that's, 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 the, that's the feel it gets. They're really trying to push this design to the absolute max. You know, this is going to be the ship that goes out into the fleet, is the flagship, is the ship that can take on things. You know, the new improved warp engines, the new improved impulse, presumably all the weapons have been upgraded, higher-end torpedoes. I mean, if you upgrade everything on the ship, 
the superstructure can take it and suddenly becomes, you know, 20% more effective than, than a Katinga, 30%. You know, this is going to be the mm -hmm. ship. And again, we really don't see it just Enterprise in, in uh, generations. You know, the captain was, hey, come on. He was picked because he was a good captain. He was mm -hmm. given a bad situation. You know, the fact that he was a captain so young means he has to have been a, a good captain in in the ways we had to control. New ship, yeah. that was probably his first, you know, few times on that ship. And so this it wasn't, probably it wasn't yeah. sorry, it wasn't Tuesday yet. Exactly. So that's all I have to say. Anyway, yeah, I'd love to have seen I would love to have seen Kirk, you know, with, with no nothing on the ship. He would have fumbled as well. He would have said, you know, Spock, do this, do this. So we can't. Ah <gasps> you know, it would have been very similar just mm -hmm. you know, without the added him so being so young, um, but no, these impulse engines I think work really well, and it does speak to the ship being being pushed to another level. Absolutely. Now another, there's so many little changes here as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, well, we've said all the big ones, so I think let's have some small ones. Well, no, most noticeably for me is the well the color palette which we just talked about, mm -hmm. um, but. The black ring around the mm. um, around the top of the saucer there. It's much more subdued and subtle, and actually more raised mm -hmm. on the Enterprise B. Mm. I and I like it a lot more. It's not as bold. It's not as in your face. It's more subtle. Mm. Um, I don't know why I prefer it. Like, I, I'm going to say that a lot during this episode. I just <laughs> know that I like it better. Okay. Um, mm. Also, one of them. Another thing that's very, very minute that you might not notice is that long strip coming back from the bridge module mm -hmm. is actually longer on the Enterprise B, slightly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Again, I don't know. It, it all works together as one overall element mm -hmm. that just... And John Eves is so brilliant at doing that kind of thing. I just... I, I, I don't understand how it works, though. <laughs> they lost the fins for the Enterprise B, as you mentioned. Yep. I don't know. <laughs> I don't well, if we go sound. to a back shot, um, which is 15 for us, uh, and then you cut into Rise B, you can see how much lower the neck is. It actually does, you know, the, the engine seems to raise a little mm -hmm. bit in terms of the detailing. It's a bit more poppy, and the, the nacelle does drop. You know, subtle little things with the colors, with the, the shapes. Um, one interesting thing you wouldn't, you wouldn't think of, but the actual, and if you go to... Uh, 02 and 03. The aft section, very integrated with the Excelsior, Enterprise B, actually pops out further. It has a more point. They they just accentuate that point shape. Mm -hmm. Which I wouldn't have I wouldn't have thought, but they did. Uh, the under shuttle bay zone is a little bit different. The details are just subtly different. The uh, the what we what we take as the cargo bay on the under under <laughs> shuttle bay that in the, in the nice swinging low detail. Again, a little bit different, a little bit. It's it's pretty small, pretty subtle, and again the Rob Bonshoon's Rob Bonshoon's choice to make this all as accurate as possible. One really interesting thing, and I don't remember seeing this from the movie exactly, but again, it's been done here for a reason. If you go to shots uh, 08 and 09, the RCS thrusters, which, as we know, you know, helped steer the ship, and it was a new, it was a new thing, and then you know, con continued on for all the other treks. Excelsior, they are not lit. Enterprise B, you hear they're lit, and they're both on the saucer and also behind the engines. There's those little uh, mm -hmm. RCS ports also lit. What do you think about that? Mm. I don't know if that was just the, like a, the model maker that did that. Did, mm. I don't remember if they were lit on Star Trek Three. I don't think they were actually, mm -mm. but uh, they are lit on the refit uh, mm. because it's part of the lighting kit, and uh, it's just something. I th again, I think it's that subtle tie into the refit and the enterprises mm. we already know. For me, that make this one pop. I like that they're lit, personally. Mm. Um, I think it adds something to the to the ship for sure. Um, hmm. Yeah. One subtle thing that the the Rob has chosen to do in the, on the same picture, the top view, is that the the sort of Azteking on the hull has actually been the texturing has been brought down to be a bit more clean between mm -hmm. the two. Um, it's just a little bit subtle if you go back to the top view again. The same thing. The Excelsior. There's a lot of wonderful like random sort of detail. Beyond just the El beyond just the as taking, put about Enterprise Enterprise B. It's a bit more clean, a bit more you know. It feels just like a bit more, I guess, refitty, refitty or even Enterprise D like, pushing mm. I suppose forward. Even though it also looks back. Not mm. sure, but I like it. I mm. like how the cleaner feel. I mean, I like the Excelsior. It is it is its own thing, but I do kind of like 
how he's done it. So I think there's actually more of an Aztec pattern, a distinct Aztec pattern as well. Mm -hmm. hmm. And uh, oh, when we were looking at the undershot, mm -hmm. uh, the the detailing on the bottom of the secondary hull that kind of almost like a delta shape from the side how mm. dark and pronounced it is on the Excelsior and how mm. subtle it is because of not only the addition of the boat hull but also mm. the color palette that's used again the subtlety of it I think is another mm. reason that I like this ship more uh, that really breaks up the secondary hull on the Excelsior and I think it's kind of distracting uh, mm. whereas on the B mm. it's much more like you know and it just looks like a better hull uh, because of that <laughs> different color Mm. I, I, again, I don't know why. But Stuart, we talked about I think basically all the differences and similarities there. But there's one interesting thing I wanted us to, to look at, and it's comparative in in the universe in terms of of, of the different ships. So if you go to the side scale, the picture where it shows the refit, shows the Enterprise, uh, the Excelsior, the Enterprise B, and the Ambassador, and this is the uh, Enterprise refit from the director's cut. This is the Canon Enterprise model the B and Excelsior from Eagle Moss, and then this is a fan version of the Ambassador, but as you can see it's quite a nice high detail one. So this is then correctly scaled and in the order. What do you think about the evolution of Enterprise tech? It, it's perfect. Uh, <laughs> it, it seems to scale up each time perfectly, uh, even to the Enterprise D from the C. Uh, mm -hmm. Just the sizing is just, it's like a, it's a nice angle on a on a chart it's just it's the, the way they have it is, is perfect um and it speaks to different mission profiles of course bigger ships longer mm. missions um i think it's a it's a great evolution um yeah i don't know what else to say there <laughs> yeah i mean i think one nice one interesting thing they could have played with was that the idea of you know the enterprise classic it refits to the to the refit, you know, stylistically very different, but scaling very similar. The Enterprise or the Excelsior, sorry, the Enterprise B, would have been interesting if, say, each Enterprise was a refit of another design. You know, the they've taken a, a well enjoyed design and then you know pushed it to the edge. It would have been fun to see, you know, the Ambassador and the Enterprise C version, same with the D. That would have been fun to see. So you could have doubled up each iterative step. You know, just get slightly bigger, get slightly bulkier, change the tech. Obviously, that gets abandoned when you reach the the B. So then C, D, E, they all change. But that you know, if you added the Connie, this it would have been quite a step, 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 step. Mm -hmm. But like we said before, the big the big difference I really see um, is, as you say, more just the need for more space, the need for more tech. I mean, although the, to be fair, the impulse engines they probably you know you can you they've taken out some windows. The depends how big they are. You are taking out some living space. That's fine. But you're adding it mm -hmm. back in, and I'm sure. If they're doing a full, full refit, even just an internal one, they might, you know, take out the previous version of the, you know, data core, put in the one that's ten percent sm smaller, you know, the new version. Yeah. Or or some tech that's can be shrinked because then all the internal space is worth more. Uh, the C is obviously a big improvement in that direction, but like, again, the big thing I see is the new Bazards. There's not too much. I mean, would it have been cool to have seen the, the outer ring, of the of the um, you know, the grilling with that if that would been glowing blue like mm. if that had been glowing blue and the basards were red what about that for another step would that have been too much or really cool do you think mm, that's a very good question mm -hmm. uh, I kind of like the fact that the bizarres aren't red on this era I mean it really Me it shows you what era it's from the refit yeah. the excelsior the you know it, they've gone with a different way for tech uh, which they eventually go back to, but um, I think I think blue uh, blue uh, grilling would be really nice. Uh, even keeping the blue bizarre collector glow at the front, and we do see blue glow on the Excelsiors later. Um, well, at least in flashback and Deep Space Nine, but mostly not in Deep Space Nine. They somehow kept those. The Reliant is the one that really changes those. The Excelsior is still. Oh really? I thought the. the some do, Excelsior. some don't. It it's it's inconsistent. Same with TNG. Well, TNG keeps the classics. It's mm. it's kind of like, yeah. No, I would have liked I would have liked to see a blue glow on the this, this on the uh, grilling, but I don't think the red bizarres would really suit this ship, especially with those big red impulse engines right in front of them. Um. Hmm. So. Mm. Yeah, I think it would have been cool to see the refit to the refit. You know, that would have been fun to see the next iteration. 
you know, so more would have. Of... It would be cool, actually. Sorry for jumping in on your thought there, um, yeah. but like the Enterprise C nacelles have those shrunk down, slimmed down to like Excelsior size, and put on the Excelsior model as the next refit step. <laughs> would be kind of cool. Um, that style, like that look at the side. Hmm. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I think it would have been cool to see, you know, a, a secondary refit. Because we didn't get to see the Enterprise B refit, except in one instance, the Lakota, which I, my, m boggles my mind. I mean, it wouldn't take very long to convert a model to the the mm. refit. But it, I guess it makes it very special, you know, and if you're refitted, la di da di da But we need to have seen this one more, because it's, it's a really nice iteration. It really is, and it should have been, if it, really, if it really was that next step. The fact that it wasn't implies it was a failed step. Like they, it didn't maximize, or it wasn't worth the price, or I don't know. Yeah, it's, there's got to be some reason for that because I think you're right. Probably that only a few were retrofitted and upgraded, um, for whatever reason. Uh, the rest were left as Excelsior class. But I guess the one I like is a failure. Hmm. And that is it for today. That feels such a sad way to end on. Basically, we love these ships, um, sort of. And if we, if we combine our love, Stuart, we love them both. There you go. Yeah, yeah, the Excelsior's all right. <laughs> I'm going to get a lot of hate for that, but that's okay. I love the Enterprise B, the Excelsior, not so much. I just don't know why. But we hope you guys enjoyed this detailed look at these two amazing 3D models, amazing guys that built them. I mean, beautiful, beautiful. I mean, you... Oh, and I wish they had these in DS9 because that model is not as good. <laughs> but they need to be. Uh, if you want to support this show, there are two amazing ways, and the free way as well. Stuart, what are the what are the amazing support ways? Well, the free way is the best, well, easiest for a lot of people out there. Not the easiest. best way necessarily, but oh. please share the video around and mm -hmm. uh, you know share the Trek Yards love. If you can donate um, mm -hmm. financially, there's two ways to do that. Do so uh, in the description below. There's a link to Patreon. You can click mm -hmm. that and help us on a monthly basis, which, as Samuel always says, keeps the lights on. I've got a lot more than four lights though. Um, mm. But anyway, uh, so go over there. Even a dollar a day would help us out. Mm -hmm. If everybody donated a dollar, we'd be on cloud nine. Uh, not a dollar a day, a dollar a month. Did I say a dollar a day? I did. Hey, dollar a day would be even better. It would be. So $30 a month or a dollar a month even <laughs> is fine. Uh, that'll help us out. Uh, or you can donate one time a donation or a couple times a year if you really wanted. Just head on over to the Trek Yards page, hit the donate button, and you can donate via PayPal and uh, like twenty dollars thirty dollars whatever mm -hmm. you can afford and that'll also help out and go in the bank towards new tech and new shows but as Stuart said the freeway is also just sharing any way you think Trek fans would like this you know we do really a lot of time and effort into these shows with amazing models amazing pictures that Stuart finds of you know, Starfleet battles or the movies or guests we do all this for you guys but anything that takes time takes money just to keep the time being available to you so please support and if not just share and until next time, another great Saturday episode we're so very proud of because we love what we do here. Absolutely. It's fun. I am Commander Cookins. And I'm Captain Foley. I'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys. <laughs>